Hi, my name's Leone. Um, I'm a mother of two. I live in London. I was bamboozled, bamboozled by a company called Apodo. Um, they took my money and refused to refund it. They took £900 from me. They've um, been playing um, insidious games with my mind, making me run around chasing them for something they had no intention of paying back. They offered no incentives, no compensation, no rectification, no solutions. I definitely wouldn't recommend this company. They're awful. They have no moral compass and they are the devil's henchmen. I um, booked my first ever package holiday, my first holiday abroad as an adult for the very first time with a podo. Um, um, it was my first holiday with my son as well. So it was really important to me. It was going to be magical and I really wanted it to be um, worth the money I was willing to spend on it. Um, I was a bit um, curious of where to go because I've never been abroad. So I was struggling with different destinations like Bali or Morocco, Tenerife and um <clears throat> I was looking at other websites initially, like um, booking.com and um, lastminute.com uh, initially, and um, their prices were fair, but I was just trying to keep my options open and trying to do thorough research, as they say. Um, and I'm not sure how Apodo got in my algorithms because I'd not really heard much about them. I'd seen them possibly before in the past, and that's why the banner of Apodo didn't throw me off I knew I'd seen it or looked on their site in the past so when they got in my algorithms um I I done a search and I ended up settling with um Israel in Tel Aviv um and when I looked at their prices um I decided I'd stick with Apodo and I went for a hotel and flights and checked out the prices and um, I only had like a few days to make this decision, if I'm honest with you, once I settled with a podo. So I was like running through different options over the weekend. Um, and I had to book on the Monday morning when a certain amount of money was dropping into my account to make me afford this holiday. Because I don't intend to have that kind of money to spend on a holiday ever. So um, my budget was initially 1000 600 UK pounds but when it came to um, um, settling for the holiday the night before it had risen to 1,900 so I was like okay that's my maximum that's my maximum and so on the Monday morning I was booking I went to um, book the holiday got to almost the checkout or I hadn't exactly put all the little final details in like um, cancellation and luggage and the price had jumped to 2,600 or something or 2,800. And I was like, wow, this price is really fluctuates. So I grabbed another phone and I tried a different hotel or say even a different hotel or the same hotel. And I just tweaked it a little bit and um, went through the whole booking process, adding bits like seats, sitting next to my son, baggage, cancellation, got to check out and the price was 2,600, nearly 700 way over my budget. But I was in this zone of, oh, it's once in a lifetime. Just fuck it. I know I want this and I want that as well. Sorry to swear. Um, but um, I might as well just go for it. I'm going to have a blast. It's going to be amazing. So I pressed checkout and I got a confirmation email almost immediately. Um, and I went to go and check it. And I just just kind of speed read through it and just went straight for the kind of the itinerary, like hotel, how many days and, um, you know, the flights and whatever. And and what immediately stood out for me was um, my son, my sorry, what stood out for me was the hotel did not include breakfast. And I was like, that's strange for that amount of money. You should have breakfast at the very least. So I got on the phone immediately to Apodo and I called them up and um, I, I was just met with the first red flag, to be honest. Um, they were saying to me, um, yeah, there's no 
um, it's not refundable for the hotel and we can't change anything and it doesn't work like that. And I should have read the small print and my heart was beating in my chest and I was saying things like, I need to speak to your manager and um, uh if he doesn't, if they don't, if you're not willing to change it, I'll just cancel the whole holiday. I remember saying that to them verbally. And then the lady kind of changed her tune and said, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. I'm sure I just need to pass this on to the, another department and they'll get back to you in two days. I just had to sit tight and I was like, okay, fine. Um, and I was just wrestling with myself. Should I cancel it? What should I do? And I just thought, just let them, I'm sure they're going to do something. So I think the next day I got this reply and the reply said, sorry, no, we can't um, cancel your holiday. We can't cancel it and it's non-refundable hotel. Um, and I remember feeling really disappointed. And um, I called the hotel um, overseas and I just um, double checked with them if, it was, if, it, if I could cancel. And they said, no, according to our system, you can't cancel. And they said, um, I said, how much is breakfast? And they gave me a price and I was just like, whoa, that's more expenditure. After I was told that um, it's non-refundable, I received the email that was just kind of like two sentences um, saying, yeah, it's non-refundable. We can't do anything. And your hotel is not willing to um, add breakfast along them lines. And there was like no resolution or anything, just very blunt. Um I decided to go ahead with the holiday and just have to pay for breakfast and just to keep, just to not stress. Um, and so I got on with whatever I was doing, like shopping and other stuff. And um, a couple of days later, about five, six days later, um, I got an email from a podo saying, oh, to avoid disappointment, book now to have your seats beside your second passenger. And I was like, hmm? I distinctly remember putting me and my son side by side for the flights there and return. So why are they trying to get more money out of me to sit beside him? So I called them up and um, I, I said, can you tell me where I'm sitting with my son? And she goes, she checks it out and she's like, oh, yeah, you're sitting beside him. And I goes, oh, that's strange. I got an email saying blah, blah, blah. We're not sitting together. She goes, nope, you're sitting together you and then she goes oh but what I can see is that you have two passengers with the same name on this booking and I was like what and um I was like really confused and I remember spending about an hour and a half to nearly two hours with this caller trying to get to the bottom of this where neither of us can identify how this happened and she has no intentions of taking any blame or they might be at fault or them trying to fix it. It was like the only, op- the only option is it's going to go to the, the back office, a different department, and they will have a look at it. And I remember just my blood boiling because I felt like it was just kind of a closed door, like it was just a one-sided um, scenario where they were holding, calling the shots. And it was um, a a not nice place to be in, to be honest, because I I deal with customer service quite a lot. And I can tell when a company is there to support you or help you and when a company is not. And I was just getting that vibe. They are not about that. They're going to make this difficult for me. And they've now got my money and they're calling the shots. And I felt so much stress. I'll never forget that day. Like I was just tears crying, high blood pressure. Um, I could feel just... Oh, so much tension and um it just ended with the call with her saying you can always make a complaint and her saying to me towards the end I'm sorry you're going through this I'm sorry and it just sounded so robotic and so unfeeling um I just it didn't mean anything to me how's that gonna save my holiday how's a sorry gonna resolve this situation I need resolution and um I had to wait the two days and lo and behold I got an email saying yep uh, we can't do anything about ticket name changes. Um, there's nothing we can do about it. Just blunt, cut, no solution. So I just, I was like, okay, this needs to get cancelled. Um, and they say they were saying the, the they were saying to me the whole the holiday is not. I can't cancel the holiday, um, which I didn't quite understand. So I went to um, 
I think it was ABTA, a UK form of travel protection. And I was told, I've got the disappointing news that Apodo are no longer affiliated with them. And they had parted ways in the past year. Um, and so I called my local citizens advice and they went through, they were checking it out and they were like, yeah, sorry, we can't help you either. Um, this is a international firm. It doesn't come under UK law. Your only option is to try um, an international consumer centre. And they gave me a number, which I was very grateful for because it was um, difficult getting that information out of that person. And um, when I did get through to international consumer help, um, um, they were very helpful. They took details of my case and they rightfully said to me, they really can't do that. And um They've, in fact, made an agreement with a minor if they're standing firm on that they can't change the name of the booking um, to the adult passage and correct name. They've made a contract with a minor. So that was what I had to hang on to. And it gave me some hope because I could see I was like a small fish dealing with a shark at that moment. So... Um, I wrote, I wrote to my, I wrote to Podo and I was calling them and I was saying cancel my holiday. And I quoted the fact they'd made a, a contract with a minor, which I knew they couldn't really get wiggle out of that. And um, I contacted my bank to try and get, um, I think it's called a charge back in the UK. And I had to submit so much documents and it literally became like all consuming very quickly no longer was I booking up, planning a holiday, should be getting my clothes and looking at things to do. It was trying to claw back this money and how am I going to do it and what help can I get? And it was really, really stressful. I've never felt stressed like it. It was horrific. I was embarrassed. I told a few friends. They had sympathy, but I just felt so stupid that I, I, that I didn't see this error and that I didn't really know this website. And... um I just felt like a, a real dumb, dummy. Like, how did I fall for this? You know, um, why didn't I read reviews? I started reading reviews and they were just awful. They were one star, <laughs> really, really abysmal feedback. And it really made my heart sink. And I knew that this was the beginning of the end, to be honest, from what I was seeing on the reviews. It was really depressing at some points. I wouldn't say I felt suicidal, but if I didn't have my son, I think the stress of it and how I was being treated, it really took a toll on my mental health, put it that way. And um, I was taking it out on innocent people sometimes, you know, because I was dealing with faceless people being quite curt, uncaring and not helpful at all when I was dealing with a podo, you know. Um, and all I wanted was to speak to a human being that had some sort of clout or power that could just say, look, I'll sort this out for you, tap, 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 and just fix it. And I, and I wasn't getting that in no shape or form with them. Um, they can't, their, their attitude towards me was like, sorry, but what can you do about it? You should have read the small print. They actually said that to me in layman's terms, like, you know, you should have read the small print before you checked out um, in one phone call. And I'm like, who does that? Who books, makes a booking and reads the entire contract before they press checkout? Nobody. And I went around asking quite a few people and everyone said they don't do that. So to me, that seemed like a big con. That's where they're probably making a lot of money out of people and it's criminal. And um, um, so fast forward, I was looking at my insurance papers. I was in the process of cancellation. And uh, the insurance seemed like it was null and void as well. Um, this insurance for Atoll had a re had an invalid date on it. It said it was valid from September of that of last year to the October. Like it was a one month insurance document, but I had booked the hotel and um, booked my package holiday after that insurance validity date. So they had in fact sent me fake insurance documents as well. Um, or fake atoll insurance. The process with the um, international company was very slow and laborious towards the end. They were helpful in the beginning, but they had an immense caseload. So that was very stressful as well. So I, and towards the end, I ended up doing 90% of the legwork and it was a constant day in, weekly, week out thing. And what 
Apodo was doing was switching the goalposts. They initially said the hotel was non-refundable. Once I cancelled, I was refunded the hotel. So then I was waiting for my airline tickets to be refunded. They said to me, the airline's non-refundable. I challenged it verbally. I challenged it in writing. And they said, oh, okay, we'll, we'll ask the airline. We'll, we'll put in a request. And they had me ch- sitting and chasing them and waiting for a whole four extra weeks for something they knew was not going to materialize. Um, so they acted as if they were doing something, but they weren't really doing anything. And when I called Lafuenza myself, the airline, they said, no, we've not received anything from Apoda. We've not received any cancellation requests or money back requests. Um, the booking is still open. The flight is still open. Um, and I said, and I asked Lafuenza, how can I get them to refund me? And how could I, and initially I asked Lafuenza, how can I get them to change the names on the flights and, or how can I get it changed, should I say? And they said, I personally couldn't do it because I'm, I've booked with an agency. So um, only they have the power to do that. And they have to contact a particular department in Lafuenza to request that change. So it is possible to change a name. Um, but Apodo were counteracting that, saying, nope, nope. The friends that said we can't do that. It's in terms of conditions. We, we, we have no authority. We can't do that. So I was getting different he say, she say from both sides. And that was another stress in itself. Um, and then that rumbled on for another four weeks as a, as a booking date is getting closer and closer to takeoff day. I was getting notifications all the time, like you're going on holiday, get ready for your holiday. Even though I had canceled it, I was still getting notifications for the flights, which was like a punch in the gut mocking me making me chase them to say what's going on why does my flight still say open and then and then you know how how they work is they have these people that answer the phones but they have them apparently limited access to things and limited things what they can do it always it always has to get passed to another department so I was just constantly repeating myself and, you know, every time I called up, they'd say, oh, you have a flight booked for um, Israel um, to go to Tel Aviv. And it's like, no, I haven't. Can't you see it on the system? <laughs> it was like maddening experience, you know. Um, so in the end, the flight took off with allegedly two empty seats. And um, to, the, to the bitter end, um, they were saying it couldn't be cancelled. And um, what what was frustrating was they initially lied to me and said the hotel was non-refundable and I'd be, um, they didn't mention anything about the airline being refundable. But once I pressed cancel, they switched it around and the hotel was now, was able to be refunded, but the flights were non-refundable. So they were just playing really confusing games with me. And it really frustrated me because it left me with no, they gave me any, they didn't give me any options. So, for example, if they'd been upfront with me and said the hotel can be refunded, but the um, the flights can't, then when they refunded me that money, I would have been like, okay, this is what I have left to rebook another holiday. But because I they didn't explain that to me, when the refund came, I felt I thought to myself, oh, another nine hundred pound is coming back to me. I'll squander this money I've got. I didn't spend it on another holiday. I thought, oh, I'll just use that 900 that's coming back to me and I'll book an, another holiday local to me instead and go a bit smaller, less days, more local. Um, so they took that option away from me by the games they played. And um, the other thing was the flights as well. Um, had they been up front with me and said, oh, you can't get your flights back, I might have kept the holiday um, to Israel, but just paid for another seat, you know. Um, But they just weren't giving me any options or alternatives, what I could do around this alleged mistake I've made. It was just flat answers. No, you can't do this. No, you can't do that. And and I just found that really poor customer service. They made me feel like an enemy. They made me feel like they were out to get me and just make me suffer. And it made me feel like um, I had to beg for my own money back. I had to, you know, 
suck up to them and be super nice. Every time I got a bit frustrated or lost my call, I felt like I was losing points and going to get my money less. So I literally had to pander to these faceless customer service representatives and not lose my call over something anyone in their right mind naturally lose their call over. I definitely would like management, the people that are above calling the shots to speak to me directly, um, explain their policies, explain why they handled it the way they did. To actually speak to these people that were calling the, the alleged shots not just a, an, a faceless apology because it's gone beyond that now. This was personal. It felt personal. A numerical or financial re re recuperation would be um, either my full refund or the equivalent of that amount of a flight. I wouldn't even want a flight with a polo, to be honest. Just um, my money back. Just my money back. Be very careful. Um, avoid package holidays with a podo because it seems you have less rights and you're more likely tied into um, not having at least one or the two of them refund your money. Um, I'd say get recommendations from other customers, read reviews of any travel companies you're planning on using, always read reviews. Um, and there's like plenty of other um, agencies to travel with and I just would not recommend a podo. <laughs> I just wouldn't recommend them. Their customer service is appalling um, and had they just been decent to me and done the right thing I would have happily have rebooked with them and used them again in future but they literally shut the door on that and chose to uphold the airline and the hotel as more priority than the paying customer which made zero sense to me. Mm -hmm.